I should ask you it. Uh, what are you doing exactly? Now, what is your work? What is your party? Now, I'm giving a new stint to my organization that is called Mongol National Organization. Mm -hmm. This Mongol National Organization was established in jail. Well, I was in jail in 1989. I was arrested in the month of August in 88. So after four months, I established my Mongol National Organization in Patrakul jail. It was 1st January 1989. And I was sent for three years under two state open at a time. But I could release after two years because the changes in political changes in Nepal. So after the release of so called in the name multi party, I was then I have started giving a new life to my organization. So I am working for this organization. And what does your organization uh, exactly stand for? My Mongol National Organization and Democracy Now the multi party has been restored after 32 years. But it is only in the name and only in the few sentences of Nepalese constitutions. So there is still there is human rights and democracy in Nepal. And I don't think that the multi party democracy and human rights. So we have to do a lot of things for democracy and human rights. Which was suppressed by Rana Singh. After that, the king also suppressed and gave interest. So after that, the Panchayat system came, and the Panchayat system was a single party like a communist party. So it also suppressed the people's rights. Now the multi party has to be stored for one day. I 
Power moment itu. Now it's quite something quite new that uh, you know you speak of the Mongol people as a general uh, term, but I think traditionally the people uh, you call Mongol people they saw themselves as Tamang or Hindu or Shapa. Uh, do you think? Don't you think it's a bit too early now? Uh, in, and that there is not. There is, at the moment now, uh, no consciousness of belonging together among those different people. It was a little bit my impression. Yeah, uh, yes, lack of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And besides this, the power and the money is also playing a major part to make our people out of harmony. Because while I wrote the book in 1985, the name of the book was Hidden Facts in Nepali Politics. I asked to do the thing in my book also. I asked to do the thing in some sentences that whether in one the thing of only 20% Hindus or he wants to do the thing of all Nepali. This king wants to be the king of all Nepali. All Nepali should be given equal opportunities. If he looks after only chetis and pound circles, being a chetis king, why will 80% Mongol people should be regarding? So I work that in this line also. And I asked in my book, while Nepal says it is a Buddhist king kingdom, and Nepal people say natives and other people go to the foreign land, and they say Nepal is the Buddhist land and Buddha's land. In the name of Buddha, Buddha Nepal takes arms to the forest. But while they come back to Nepal, they become more than 10% Hindus, then they exploit Buddhism, they suppress Buddhism. Not only that, they destroy the Stupa of Buddha in Pogra. They destroyed the monastery of Buddha in Buddha and they closed the Buddhist temple at Milan. In this way, uh, it was in 84, 74, 86, 87, why? No. They want to suppress the Buddhism in Nepal. That's why the Hindu rulers always play the role against the Buddhism. So I ventilated the facts in my book. And here are 75 districts in Nepal. But in the 75 districts in 72 districts, they are only bound and chattering you. We have not given opportunity. So while I wrote this fact in my books, I was uh, again another state worker. So I am the first person in Nepal who was arrested under the two state open act at time. One sent jail for three years, but after two years I could release. If the Panchayat system would exist, if, even now, I would have not been released. And I would have to spend my life in jail. If not, I had to surrender, but I was not in favor to surrender. I was fighting for justice and rights, not for mercy of king. So still I am 
fighting not for the mercy of king and his kinsmen and bound and chattis and fighting for democracy and human rights here. Uh, may I ask you uh, which community you belong to? I belong to Kurung Kodong. That's why And you were born where? I was born in Darjeeling district. Ah, in Darjeeling. Yes, but while I was a child, uh, 12, 13, uh, 14 years old, then I entered because my parents spent there, but they were from Nepal. All Gurungs were from Nepal. So I had a mind. And I was intended why our parents were going to the other land. So while I entered in Nepal in 1950, so that time I was a boy. So I visited many parts of Nepal. I opened many schools in Nepal, like in eastern part of Nepal. Open school, open school, and I teach to the villagers. And I went to the western part of Nepal. I opened I spent many years in teaching as a school teacher. So while I found the real story of Nepal, which was unwritten and which was exploited by the Bound and Chetty, the Rana also and Chetty, the king also belongs to the Chetty, and his place here, place there. So, so while I found the facts in Nepal, and those facts were unwritten,